Hey everyone, I'm Ultimate 456, Ely Ultimates, and welcome to episode 107 of Let's Platinum Dong Romper 2, Goodbye Despair. And one more thing, there was something else the killer did to hide the domino effect, right? Killer did one other thing to hide the domino effect. Yep, they used... The MP3 player. An MP3 player that comes with speakers. The music that was blaring throughout the warehouse when Hajime and the others arrived was coming from this. I see! You're talking about the MP3 player, right? That hymn blaring throughout the warehouse masked the sound of the falling panels. The inside of the warehouse felt even darker because our eyes were still used to the bright sunlight outside. Within that darkness, a loud hymnal blared throughout the warehouse at full volume. Hey, do you guys hear something? Yeah, it's really damn loud. Does Nagito like listening to this depressing crap? No, I'm not talking about the music. And as if on cue, it suddenly started. That's it. So the strange sound was actually the sound of the panels falling. But those sounds weren't the only strange thing, right? Looking back on it, it was also strange when we opened the door to the warehouse. It's fine. I'll open it slowly. No, that's not the problem. Seriously, it'll be fine. With those words, Akane brushed off everyone's warnings and slowly opened the door to the warehouse. Clatter, clatter, clatter. Huh? It's not opening. Is there something blocking the door? I can barely open it. Uh, I knew it. It's a trap. Seriously, j just stop it, okay? Didn't I tell you? It'll be, f it'll be fine. I just gotta use a little more force. What happened to opening it slowly? Akane ignored their protests and with a mighty kick, the door flew open. Bam! Ah, so the door was being blocked by a Monokuma panel! And when we opened the door, the domino effect started, and the falling panels eventually reached the lighter. Yeah, and that's how the warehouse caught on fire. At least, that's how it looks. You don't look so sure. At the time, Akane mentioned that she could barely open the door. Because the panel was blocking it, right? But the blocked doorway... There wasn't enough space for a person to fit through, right? Is that a problem? It's a major problem. I mean, that door was the only entrance to the warehouse. If that door was the only entrance to the warehouse... I see. So the problem Chiaki's talking about is, we couldn't see inside, they could have hidden inside, the killer couldn't have left, we couldn't take any merch. The killer couldn't have left. I see! If the panel was so close to the door that it could barely be opened, the killer inside the warehouse wouldn't be able to leave, right? Now that you mention it... Does that mean they were hiding inside? Who? We were all outside the warehouse, you know. B based on the patterns up until now, I believe some kind of setup was used. You don't have to think so hard. There's actually only one person who could have possibly done this. Huh? You don't mean... But if that's true, this murder... Um, Hajime? What do you mean? The person who set up the domino effect inside the warehouse. There's only one person who could have done that. And that person... Is you. Nagito, this is come ahead. What if... It was Nagito. Why'd you bring him up? He's the victim, you know. He wasn't just the victim. Maybe. Huh? Not just the victim? What does that mean? He was the victim. And he was the perpetrator, too. Maybe. Are you saying this was a suicide? D don't be stupid. His body was covered in torture wounds. Or did you already forget? Are, are you saying those were all self-inflicted? But Nagito might do something like that, don't you think? That's not the issue. He was tied up, remember? Even for a creep like Nagito, it'd be impossible for him to tie up his own arms and legs. Yeah, you're right. Y yeah. 
as long as you understand. It seems we need to discuss how Nagito was able to tie himself up. N need to discuss? That's not necessary at all. No matter how much you think about it, it's clearly impossible. Like he said, it seems impossible if you think about it. But I feel like I'm overlooking something. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's do this. To actually tie up your own arms and legs. That's obviously impossible. Tying just the legs is one thing, but tying both arms would be impossible. You couldn't do much with the free arm. It'd be impossible if you were by yourself. How about if you use your teeth? Or if you use your front tail. <laughs> dirty joke! Is that a dirty joke? Alright, I like this one because this is where things start to get really interesting. If our assumption that Nagito committed suicide is correct, Nagito should have tied himself up too. That's okay, right? Alright, so let's think about it. Nagito's arms and legs, you can see in that picture, were all tied up. Um, his left leg and his right leg were tied to two pillars. His left arm was tied to another pillar. His right arm was uh, not tied, it was pinned by a knife. And there's a burned rope as well. It says, the rope that was tied to Nagito's right arm burned off. However, Nagito's right sleeve still looked clean. So what does that tell us? It tells us that he burnt the rope before... To actually tie up your own arm... Hang on a sec. Uh... And legs. I might not get this. That's obviously impossible. Right, hang on a tying just the legs, tying both arms. You couldn't do much with. It'd be impossible if you were by your. How about if you use your teeth, or if you use your dirty joke? Is that a dirty joke? All right, let's try that again. To actually tie up your own arm. Burned rope. No, that's wrong. If he tied, if he burnt the rope before he attached it, then he could have done it. Hold on a sec. Isn't that premise flawed? What? I mean, it's no mistake that his arms and legs were... No, it shouldn't have been both of his arms. The rope on his right arm was completely burnt up. Based on that, you can't say he was tied up. That was just burned by the fire. He should have been tied up before then. It burned because of the fire. Like you said, it might look like that. But that was part of the trap. There's concrete evidence that proves it. The proof that the burnt rope on Nagato's right arm is a trap. The lighter, the duct tape, the knife in his right hand, his right sleeve. I see! Take a close look at his right sleeve. Even though the rope was burnt up, his sleeve wasn't burned at all. Wouldn't you agree? A burn like this, no matter how you think about it, is unnatural. That rope was burned in advance so it would look like it was burned in the fire. Then Nagito's right arm wasn't tied up, right? He was able to move it freely, right? Yeah, that should be the case. Hajime, that's awesome! I'll let you cop a feel if you want. <laughs> this is like the third or fourth time. <laughs> Akane, you should not give it away for free. Make sure they pay you first. <laughs> that's definitely wrong. <laughs> Fine. I just gotta get a Benjamin from him before I let him touch me, right? Oh my goodness. That's not what I meant. I'm talking about Nagito. <laughs> I mean, even if his right hand wasn't tied up, the knife was still stabbed into it, you know? It's impossible to stab a knife into your right hand with your right hand. Ah, that much is obvious. Hajime, you, you tricked me. Give me back that Benjamin. <laughs> Not only did she try to charge me, now she wants the money back. What the heck? Hold on. There should be a way. <laughs> then hurry up and spill it. If it's something lame, I'll make you give back the Benjamin with 10,000% interest. Jesus. Um, a way to stab yourself in your right hand using only your right hand. It's okay. There's definitely an answer for this. All right. This one, I actually struggled with this one. I couldn't work it out. It was... It was tricky. But we'll get it. Even if Nagito's right hand was free, how could he stab his right hand with his right hand? If he threw the knife into the air and let the knife fall, 
Could he stab his hand that way? Is he a throwing knife expert? Maybe he propped the knife somehow? And slammed his right hand down on it? Propped it onto what? If he just propped the knife... He could have used his bound left hand! If you're tied up, your arms won't bend that easily. We don't know if his left hand could even reach his right hand. Give me back the Benjamin. <laughs> that was the white noise there. If Nagato could only use his right hand to stab himself in the palm, then how did he do it? All right. Even if Nagito's so, right hand was free. This one, give me a second, is actually the Monokuma plushie. A life-size Monokuma plushie that was found on the floor near the fire's origin point. It has a huge bloody hole in its stomach, as if it was stabbed. So what we do... How could he stab his right hand with his right hand? If he threw the knife into the air and let the knife fall, could he stab his hand that way? Is he a throwing knife expert? Maybe he propped the knife somehow? I agree with that! I agree with that. The life-size Monokuma plushie. He must have used that to prop the knife. Makes sense. That's why there was a big hole in the plushie's stomach. He inserted the knife handle into that hole to prop it up. Then he slammed his hand onto it. If that's it, he had to place the plushie near him. And it also explains the mysterious blood on the plushie. So the blood on the plushie came from Nagito after he stabbed the knife into his own right hand. I... I see. So that's the trick. But for a moment, I seriously thought Monokuma died or something. A bleeding plushie is super scary! It's got the same fear factor as a doll whose hair grows too long! After stabbing his hand, he no longer needed the plushie, so he cast it off toward the fire's origin point. If you stab your hand, it's gonna really hurt to like knock something away like that, but okay. He probably thought the fire would incinerate it and destroy the evidence. So what do you think now, Fuyuhiko? I get what you're saying about the wound on his right hand, but there's still one huge problem. The spear. Basically, you're saying Nagito committed suicide by impaling himself with a spear, right? If you think about the order, getting killed by the spear should have been the last thing to happen to Nagito. If that's true, how is that possible? He can't grab a spear with his right hand if a knife is stabbed into it and his left hand was all tied up. Then, he probably took the spear first, and as he endured the pain, he stabbed the knife into his right hand. Th there is a limit to his constitution! If you got penetrated by something so big and thick, you would die instantly! <laughs> okay, that's a funny line. Let's hear it again! I'm sorry, I didn't catch all that. Like I said, if you got penetrated by something so big and thick, you would die instantly. <laughs> uh, say it one more time. I need to record it. For reasons. Hey, bastard, you better cut it out! <laughs> like she said, in that condition, it's very difficult to stab yourself with a spear. It'd be hard to use a spear with a knife stab into your right hand while your left hand is tied up. So you're saying it's impossible. But no matter what I think, I can't believe Nagito's death was caused by someone else. I also agree with that. To think that one of us could kill someone with such cruelty, I could never believe that. You say you can't believe it? <laughs> you just don't want to believe it, right? But that's why you keep getting betrayed over and over again, right? Same goes for this time, too. You just shut your mouth. It's against the rules to interfere with everyone. If you even think about doing anything, I have a plan of my own. Ah! Mamonami sassing me! But it's just as Monokuma said. We've been betrayed over and over again so far. So Oops. This might right. also be the same. Calling this a suicide takes too much for granted, and it's too convenient. Then are you saying there is a killer among us, Kazuichi? Uh, of course that doesn't include Miss Sonia and me. 
As Kazuichi said, it's true we've been constantly betrayed. But even if I'm betrayed again, I still want to believe in everyone. No matter how many times I may be betrayed, I still want to believe in everyone. I also want to believe that there's no killer, but suicide is unimaginable. Do you really think so? But you said it too. It'd be impossible for him to stab himself with a spear in his condition. I did say difficult, but I never said impossible. Huh? I feel that there's... some way he could have stabbed himself with that spear. What kind of way? I don't know. You don't know? It's impossible to figure out by myself. So let's think about it together. That's how. We made it this far up till now. Everyone, working together. She's right. We've made it through several ordeals up till now by doing that. Then, even now. Alright, let's do this. Alright, let's figure this out. How did Nagito do it? How did Nagito stab himself with a spear? Let's work together and think this through. When the spear stabbed Nagito, his right hand was covered by the knife, right? He was only able to move his left hand. But his left hand was also tied up. Then that rules out his left hand. If that's the case, the only other way is... He used his teeth? Or maybe he used his front tail? <laughs> No guys have tails that get hard when they're grabbed. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> I'm blushing this Sonia is freaking awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's see. If Nagato committed suicide, then he must have used that spear to stab himself. Even if his arms and legs were tied up, there's no doubt he used some part of his body. The only thing he could have used is. All right, let's figure this out. So there were a lot of uh, like things in there but there was only one contradiction so blood on left hand blood was splattered on the palm of nagato's left hand for some reason the splatter cuts off in the middle of his palm also the back of his left hand has an unnatural blood stain that's only above the middle joints of his fingers all right so let's see how did see. nagato stab himself with a spear let's work together and think this through when the spear stabbed Nagita, his right hand was covered by the knife, okay, right? That's true. He was so. only able to move his left hand, but his left hand was also tied up. Then that rules out his left hand. Oh crap. Oh, it doesn't. No, that's wrong. <clears throat> doesn't rule out his left hand. We're going to find out exactly why. Hold on. It's still too early to dismiss the possibility that he used his left hand. Why? I mean, his left hand was tied up, you know? But there was something off about his left hand. The blood stain on the palm of his hand. Don't you think it looked somewhat strange? He only had blood on the lower area of his palm. Beyond that point, the blood stain suddenly cuts off, right? When the blood splattered, that's as far as it reached, right? That settles the description of that blood stain, but it's not the only unnatural blood stain. Look, there's blood on the back of his hand, around the middle joints of his fingers. Like you said, it looks like an unnatural blood stain, but what's wrong with that? We might need to think and use our imaginations for a bit. If there's blood on his palm and the back of his hand, what was his left hand doing as the blood splattered? What was Nagito's left hand doing when the blood splattered? Open? Nope. Gripping? Hmm. Hiding? No. The back of his hand was exposed. Uh, he was gripping. I see! When the blood splattered, he was probably gripping with his left hand. That's why there's such a strange looking blood stain on his palm and the back of his hand. Was he grabbing his front tail? <laughs> Perish the thought! He was obviously grabbing the spear! Now that you mention it, compared to the rest of his body, the wounds on his left arm are pretty mild. He probably made his wounds mild on purpose, so he could keep his strength while he gripped the spear. But even if he held the spear with his tied up left hand, it'd be impossible for him to stab himself. That's right. That's the problem. Hey Chiaki, what do you think? 
Hey, don't tell me you're getting sleepy. At times like this, you should always strike from a good angle. Just like fixing an old TV. <laughs> oh, I got it. Maybe. <laughs> really? Yeah, like I thought. It's no mistake that Nagito was gripping the spear. I think. However, what's important is what section of the spear he was gripping. Which section of the spear was he holding on to? He was holding on to the cord. I see! That's it. Instead of the handle, Nagito must have been holding on to the cord. Okay, so now that we know that, you guys have a little bit of time to try and figure out exactly what was going on while he was uh, doing all that. And we're going to find out more about that next time. For now, I want to thank you all for watching episode 107 of Let's Platinum Dungeon Romper 2 Goodbye Despair. My name is Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and I'll see you next time.